What's going on? My name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Today we're going to be talking about church, right? And broken people. Shout out to Upset the Gram. I believe that's the name of this channel. So here we go. Telling the whole world, come as you are. But when they show up as, they're, as they are, they're too fragile to even handle it. This is a place where the broken can feel at home. Then the broken come and we're like, oh my God, you're broken. They're repulsed by it. <laughs> I didn't know you were that broken. Either we can deal with a mess or we can't. Which one is it? Right? And then, and then you're mad that, that, that we've created environment to like try to navigate through a mess. Right. So yeah, church fragility is a real thing. And maybe this is the reason why a lot of people don't feel like the church is safe. Right. Everybody, everybody's uh, like so many churches are in a huddle talking about how, how do we get more, how do we get people? How do we reach the loss? How do we get people? Well, well, how, how about instead of having like getting your growth track down and, and making sure your worship set is tight and the AC works and you know, you're giving out free donuts to first time visitors. How about you just make sure it's safe? Yeah, I did. How about you just make sure the atmosphere is safe enough for people's humanity? How about if a girl that's been an escort for 18 months decides she doesn't want to do this anymore, comes into the church, how about you make sure it's safe enough for her to tell you what she was for the last 18 months without you trying to sleep with her, male or female? How about let's make the church safe again? The church is telling the whole world, come as you are. But when Oh, that last part was nasty, baby. Makes me ugh, makes me feel a certain way. Think about this, young man. <laughs> Can a girl come in 18 years? I mean, after 18 months being on the streets and tell you that she's been sex trafficked without you wanting to sleep with her, without you wanting to sleep with her. That's deep. That's deep, man. Because I tell you, man, obviously I've been to church my whole life. So I've obviously been in the church atmosphere. I know what it feels like to be the church. I know what it feels like to be the only person in there um, who's brand new. I know what it feels like to, there to be a culture, huddles, teams. I've been on the worship band. I've been a drummer. I've been a singer. Uh, so I've been a lot of things in the church. I obviously was a youth leader for a long time. I've worked with kids for a long time. So I've done a lot in the church. And I could tell you this, man, it is absolutely crazy that you cannot walk in the church these days. Um, now, obviously, there's a difference between, you know, the Protestant church, and the Catholic church, because the, the the methods. But nonetheless, let's say all things being equal. Let's say you just for most people, they're probably going to walk into a Protestant church before they walk into like a Catholic church or like a Methodist church or something like that. Where there's a little bit difference. So let's just say you walk into your normal everyday uh, Baptist church. Right. And you walk in, you know, you got the worship, you got the concert lights and all that kind of stuff. You go into a church like that. It doesn't seem that you can be fragile and broken. Because it does seem like there are huddles, man. And I've been in the church politics when I was in the worship band. I can tell you, these people think differently when you, when or for some of y'all who are in the, like the choir. I've been in the choir, too. But when you get deeper into the church politics, talking with the pastor more, talking with the assistant pastor, deacons and stuff like that, it is a different world because they do seem to be more clicked up. There seems to be always this group. And even when I was a youth leader, there was a oh, there was a click. I was a part of those clicks. It is different. And if you come in there fragile and broken, you just came off the streets, you're a prostitute or something's going on. The church, you think that the church sometimes looks at you like, oh, we're going to help this person. We love this person just as we love our brother. Oh, absolutely not. Oh, absolutely not. If you don't come in looking like, uh, you got your tie on, you got your shirt buttoned up, you don't come in looking like that, they're going to question you. They're going to make you into a project, which means they're going to take you out to Sunday lunch. They're going to make sure you're at everything from Monday, uh, Monday night women's Bible study to Tuesday night men's uh, Bible study if you're a man, to Wednesday night everybody Bible study, Thursday, you know, prayer, Friday, you're going to be at everything. They're going to make sure you get everything because they want to make sure that you make the church look good. If you come off the street as a prostitute, you come off the street as a homeless man, they're going to make sure that they make it seem like the church helped you become who you are. And believe it, every Sunday, they're going to be like, hey, that man right there, when he came into the church, he was homeless. When he came to the church, he was homeless. Look at him now. He's got a job at the local McDonald's. He's got a job at the McDonald's. 
And they're gonna make you into a project. You don't. It's they make you less than a human being. It's like you coming in there homeless or coming off the streets from doing stuff that they wouldn't agree with. And now that you got a job at McDonald's, or now you're starting to kind of pick your life up, and you're making your little ten dollars an hour, they think that they were a part of that. And I do think the church is supposed to help broken people. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, you will always feel like an outcast. You it will take you years to get into the group, right? You're gonna have to start showing up to church, jacket, tie, button up. You're gonna have to start looking like that for people to take you seriously. And even then, you may still always be on the out because the second you fall back into trouble. The second you fall back into trouble, oh boy, they'll, they'll move right on from you. They'll be like, oh, we can't have this person in here. We can't do all that. Uh, uh, uh. The church only cares about you as long as you're succeeding sometimes, right? Some churches, they really get into this whole, they're trying to put, it's like they're trying to put on like a, uh, um, I don't know how to explain it, like a rock star atmosphere. You go in there and the worship is just to the roof, right? Got it. You got your guitars, you got your drummers, you got the lights, you got to bow your head, close your eyes. And then the preacher gets up there later and they talk to you about this is going to be your year. Right. This year, you are going to make a lot of money because we have too many friends who aren't really our friends. Right. We have too many people out here who are saying uh, that they are for us, but they really against us. Look to your neighbor and say, are you for me or are you against me? Right. It's too many churches like that, guys. And I've been at churches of all colors. So it ain't just a black thing. I know some people think that, but I've been to churches of white, black, Latinos. I've been to all types of churches over my, tired of my, over my lifespan. And there's a lot of different preachers, a lot of different priests and stuff like that. So I've heard it come from everybody. And it's always this, 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 it's a lie. The point of going to church is not to become prosperous. It's not, you don't go to church to be like, oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm finally going to start making money. McDonald's is going to promote me. That is not. I hate hearing that from churches when I hear stuff like, uh, you're no longer going to be in a recession. You're going to be in a progression. I just hate hearing that kind of stuff because it's like, that's not what I came here for. Church is about, you're talking about wherever you go, but it's about living our life for the gospel and showing the love of Jesus, doing that kind of stuff. It's not about my life getting better because what they make it seem like is if your life is not getting better, then obviously you're going against God. So if you come to church and they say you're supposed to prosper and you lose your job, um, and you can't get another job. Your car breaks down and you're struggling to pay the bills and everything's starting to become hard. And they're talking about being prosperous, yet your life is getting worse. It makes it seem like you're not. It seems like you're doing something wrong when it just happens. People lose their job. People get laid off. It is a part of life, but they make it seem like you losing your job or getting laid off or going through hard times. It's like you're going against God and God is not there for you. That's just what I see. I like, I, obviously I'm Catholic, but when I go, for me, the Catholic sermons I hear, which we call homilies, when I go in there and the, most of the ones I've been to, not saying it's one of the better, I have been to some Catholic <laughs> masses that were not good, but Normally, when these last few years, the homilies I hear are just based off of, hey, here's this. Here's my opinion on it. What we need to do with this, right? It's more God oriented than people oriented. Does that make sense? It's more about, they don't talk about, is your life going well? Is your life going great? They don't get into all that. They get into, here what it is. Here's the love that God can show for you. And this is what it is. I think that's much more important. To, if I walk into a, uh, a church and I'm homeless, just just talk to me, be like, hey, here's God's love, and this is this, and this is that, and this is this. And it's more of a a discipline, more of a kind of thing. I don't know how to explain it exactly right. I'm saying that God being part of your life, church being part of your life, you're going to church. You're not necessarily serving God for what you can get back. You're not going in there to be prosperous, to be rich, to get a brand new car, to get checks in the mail. Not that kind of stuff. You're going in there to just be like, this is what it is. I go in here to recharge so I can go back out into the world and continue to show love to everybody else. Show love, God's love to other people. I come here because I'm broken down. I come in here because I've been beaten up by the world. I've gone through all these debates. I've gone through all this material. I've talked about all these things. I've had people say they want me dead. I go to church, recharge, just remember God's love for me and remember the sacrifice that he made for me. And, he, and then go back out into the world and go back to war again, you know? And go back to war again, whatever that is. It's not the same for everybody, but I'm going back to war. I'm recharged. 
I know how God loves and I know I'm doing everything in my life for a reason, for a purpose. That's what I believe you should be going to mass or church for, whatever you call it. But that's not what we see. We see people go into the church, they're broken and they go in there and it's like, you're broken. Now let God build you up and give you some money. Let God build you up and get you that brand new car. And if you're not getting that stuff, you're nasty. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. I don't know. But that's just me, man. Let me know what y'all think, man. Do you think church is really uh, allowing people to just be there and learn about God's love and learn about actually getting back out into the world? Or do you think it's more about getting in there, being prosperous, get your checks in the mail, making a lot of money. The pastor is way richer than you'll ever be. Everybody on the worship band is richer than you'll ever be. They got the perfect family, perfect two kids. They always smile and they have a perfect life. Or do you go to church and be like, hey, man, everybody's in here broken, but we just getting back. We just getting prepared to go back out to war. We all family here and we love each other. We getting ready to get prepared to go back out here into the war. That's That's just me, though. I might not be explaining that perfectly, but I have plenty of videos on this kind of stuff. So just know that, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below. I'm gone. Peace.